caffeine does not give you energy. So in the morning, when you wake up and you take that first sip of coffee and you go from feeling tired to having a ton of energy and feeling like you can take on the world, caffeine is not giving you energy. So what is it doing? Well, let's talk about it. Oh, I love caffeine. So first, we have to talk about what makes you feel tired in the first place. And when people think of sleep and chemicals, they tend to think of melatonin. Melatonin is a chemical that's made in the pineal gland, but the release or non-release of melatonin depends on the suprachiasmatic nucleus, a different area of the brain. Basically, when light comes into our eyes, the suprachiasmatic nucleus says, hey, it's daytime, pineal gland, do not release the melatonin. But when it's nighttime, it says, oh, it's, it's nighttime, pineal gland, go ahead and release the melatonin. Light entering our eye inhibits the release of melatonin. If you've noticed, if you're in bed and you've got TikTok in front of your face, shining lights in your eyes, if you've got a movie on on your TV, you find it harder to feel tired because you're tricking your brain to, into still thinking that it's daytime. You're still getting light into your eyes and you're inhibiting the release of melatonin. In fact, there's even melatonin pills you can buy to help you fall asleep. Although melatonin pills don't put you to sleep. They're not sleeping pills. What they do is they help reset your circadian rhythm, which is your body's natural 24 hour clock of, of, hey, I should be awake now and hey, I should be asleep now because melatonin actually is not the chemical in your body that puts you to sleep. Increased levels of melatonin in your body, just tell your body, hey, it's now time to go to sleep. It's your body's signal of, okay, time to wrap things up, time to go to sleep. If you're driving a car and you see a red light, you slam on the brakes to stop, stop in time for the red light, the red light is the melatonin. It's the signal saying, hey, you should stop now. Melatonin's telling your body, hey, you should be going to sleep now. Let's start the sleeping process. But the brakes, the actual thing that stops the car is a different chemical. That chemical, the sleepiness chemical, the chemical that makes you feel tired is adenosine. Now, if you remember back to high school science, adenosine might sound familiar to you from adenosine triphosphate, one of the products of cellular respiration. And that is because Adenosine comes from ATP, it comes from adenosine triphosphate. So as we live our life, as we move through the day, our body gets energy through this process called cellular respiration that occurs in our cells, where we take glucose from the food that we eat and oxygen from the air that we breathe, and we react them in our cells, in our mitochondria, to create carbon dioxide, which we breathe out, water, and ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And that ATP, adenosine triphosphate, through a bunch of different other processes where these phosphate groups are taken off, that adenosine triphosphate turns into adenosine and throughout the day, as we're more active, we're collecting more and more and more adenosine. Your brain has these adenosine receptors that adenosine molecules can bind to. And when these adenosine molecules bind to the adenosine receptors, that's what makes you feel tired. That's the I'm tired, I'm gonna go to sleep feeling. And the more adenosine there is built up in your body, the stronger that urge of going to sleep is. That's why it's harder to stay awake the longer you've been awake. It's because adenosine keeps building up in your body. Now that we've talked about the adenosine receptor and adenosine, we can finally talk about caffeine, the world's most commonly used psychoactive drug. So coffee is present in coffee, obviously, but also in teas and soft drinks and dark chocolate. And so when people in the morning take that cup of coffee to give themselves energy, well, unless you're putting tons of milk and sugar in there, there's not much in that cup of coffee in terms of calories. There's no real energy in there. And so what is it actually doing to make us feel awake and alert? Well, the structure, the chemical structure of a caffeine molecule is similar to that of an adenosine molecule. And so what caffeine does in our body is it takes the place of adenosine and binds to those adenosine receptors. So when adenosine binds to adenosine receptors, we feel tired. But when caffeine binds to adenosine receptors, we don't feel tired. What caffeine is doing, it's not giving you energy, is it's just delaying the tiredness feeling. But caffeine doesn't last forever. It goes away. In fact, there's an enzyme called cytochrome P450 that degrades the, the caffeine in our bodies, destroys the caffeine in our bodies. And once the caffeine is destroyed, once it's out of that receptor, adenosine is free to go back in. And that's what makes us feel tired eventually. That's why caffeine doesn't last forever. When you drink a cup of coffee, you may be by yourself five, six, seven hours of alertness, but eventually you will feel tired again because those caffeine molecules will be destroyed and adenosine will come in and fill that spot and make you feel tired. The other thing is during the day, you're still making adenosine. And so it's not like when you drink caffeine, 
your body pauses on its adenosine production. No, it keeps producing adenosine. And so once the caffeine is gone, you still have tons of adenosine waiting to go into these adenosine receptors. And that's what gives you the caffeine crash. That's why when you take a cup of coffee, you might feel extra tired after that co coffee has worn off because the adenosine has been building and building and building and building. And all of a sudden there's a bunch of empty spaces. The adenosine rushes in and you feel very tired all of a sudden. Caffeine has a half-life of five to seven hours. Let's just say six hours for the sake of argument. Now, half-life is how long it takes for half of something to be destroyed or turned into something else. And so what this means is, let's say you have a cup of coffee on your drive home from work at like 5 p.m. So you have 100 milligrams of coffee at 5 p.m. on your drive home. If the half-life of coffee is six hours, that means at 11 p.m. at night, when many people you know, are winding down to go to sleep, you still have 50 milligrams of caffeine in your body. That's like drinking half a cup of coffee at 11 p.m. at night. Caffeine in your body doesn't let you sleep as well as if you didn't have caffeine in your body. Those adenosine molecules should be bound to those adenosine receptors. But with caffeine there, it blocks them, not allowing you to have the nice quality sleep that you should have, which is why you might feel tired in the morning because you didn't get a good enough sleep. And with a good night's sleep, your body gets rid of that adenosine. So you wake up with not a lot of adenosine in your body. But if you don't get as good a sleep, you still have a lot of remaining adenosine in the morning, which is why you might feel more tired in the morning than you should. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you learned something. I think the way that caffeine works in our body is so cool. I hope you do too. And thank you for joining me on my walk through the woods. It's been a lovely day. If you like the video you saw, I'll be making more videos about science uh, every week. I think science is so cool and I can't wait to share more interesting science stuff with you. So if you like what you saw, feel free to hit that subscribe button. But for now, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for stopping by and stay curious, everybody. See ya.